Okay, let's go uh, check out a, a, a skate park and a bike park. Okay. And again, it's good to see more apartments. Yeah, it's kind of like, you know, if I had to move to Texas, this is probably where I would end up. Yeah. And we were talking as we were rolling through here, but yes, this is the middle school that just opened. So I did film this location when they, uh, when they had their first day. Hey everyone, welcome to the Active Towns channel. My name is John Zimmerman, and this is part four of my ride with Stefan Baer, traffic advisor for the city of Harlem in the Netherlands. He was visiting Austin, Texas a few weeks ago and wanted to check out uh, some of the Dutch-inspired cycle network facilities that we have been building here in the city of Austin. And we are currently rolling past the brand new middle school here in the community of Mueller, which used to be our airport here in the city. Uh, this development has been taking shape over the past 20 years or so, with really the bulk of the construction happening within the last decade. So we are going to be heading towards the brand new gate and bike park coming up in just a moment. Uh, so let's get right back to the action with Stefan Bear. And we're going to turn left here in the cycle path. Same point of that curb back there. Yeah. I love these multicolored uh, row houses here. Yeah, yeah. It's you know, and that's this is this is actually something that I would complain about with the Netherlands is that they always go for dark red. Yeah. And one thing I love about the city of Groningen is that the the pavers are yellow. Ah, okay. And so when it rains, it shines and it yeah, brings yeah. color and energy out into the street. Yeah. And and when you're in a climate that has lots of dark weather, yeah. having vibrant colors is really important, I think. And if you look at really old Dutch buildings from the medieval yeah. era, they have that. They have, the, they have the more brighter colors on it. But when you go into the more modern era, it's always dark and rectangular, and it's yeah, quite yeah. depressing. So I'm really happy to see this. So now you can start to see we're getting into uh, the houses that are still being built. And what's this up here? There's a, a couple of different commercial buildings here. And uh, you know, is this a school also? No, this is, um, well actually, you know what this it looks like? This one might be. There's a couple different businesses here. We're gonna angle into the road here. Yeah, Rise School. It is a little school. Uh. <laughs> should I go? Should I go into the skate park with us? <laughs> nah. <laughs> How long do you think I would last on this on on this thing? <laughs> 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 How are your bike handling skills? Uh, let's find out. Yeah? <laughs> nah, <laughs> this is your bike, I'm not gonna do that. So on the Dutch I bicycle- I totally do that on my, uh, on really? my Brompton. Oh, yeah, the Brompton, yeah, yeah. that was a little bit of a tighter turning radius. Yeah. Uh, you know, if I was on my Dutch bicycle, I'd feel a little bit more confident to do yeah. that. But, yeah, yeah. It's uh, probably an extension of your body now. Although you don't get to ride it as much as you used to. The bicycle? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, you're I'm, so I'm close walking. that you can <laughs> you can walk. Yeah, I used to walk. I used to cycle. Yeah. Yeah. So I used to walk, oh, cycle all the time to my job, and then it just got to the point where I realized that parking in the bike parking garage under the office, and then finding a spot. I was like, you know, it's a 10 minute walk. I might as well just walk. It's easier. So. Oh, so hey, hey here start. you go. There's a couple available. <laughs> I wonder what the prices are. You know how much a house like this costs here? That house, probably roughly seven fifty, eight fifty, dollars something like that. <laughs> we could probably look. Yeah, I fell outside of my budget. <laughs> Maybe the ones in Amarillo will be a bit cheaper. <laughs> Oh, definitely. Yeah. 
Amarillo, you could probably get in the 200 range. Yeah. <laughs> now here's another idea for um, future ideas for the next iteration. So when you have these planting strips, yeah. Instead of having it curved, you can make them sunk a little bit and you can make those natural yep. Yep. to treat the storm water. Yep, exactly. And then you don't have to deal with the curbs quite nearly as much. Well, quite frankly, I mean, you wouldn't, you wouldn't even have this at the roadbed level. You'd have this raised up to the same yeah. as the sidewalk level. Yeah. And then, then and we've got sunk. some treatments like that that have been built recently yeah. where then, yeah, it's, it's you, you got a rain garden approach to that water management. Yeah. We have the right of way here, right? <laughs> Looks like it. Oh, well, <laughs> I took it. Yeah, yeah. They almost give, almost always give it to you whether we have it or not. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I love the yellow color, honestly. It's just yeah. Shamelessly bright and colorful and cheerful. Yep. It's like just like Texas. Yep. Yeah. That's a massive storm drain though. What's that? I wonder, I wonder what the storms are here like cuz that is a massive yeah, storm drain. And I'm yeah. getting I'm getting flashbacks to it. Yeah. Seeing that. Yeah, when it comes down, it comes down. Yeah. I would be curious to see what would happen if they removed the bollards because after a certain number of years, you could probably get away with doing it. Yeah. It's interesting how frequently people comment about it. Yeah. And yet I ride this all the time and people who live here ride it all the time. They're just like, they're like, what? What's the issue? Yeah. <laughs> well, cause yeah, because the Dutch, like they, um, one of the biggest causes of accidents for bicyclists are bollards. Yeah, but that's because you have such huge volumes of people. They can't see them. They don't see them. Yeah, I mean, here you can see them all the way along. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like when you were talking to me, I was getting like bollard anxiety. I was like, oh, you're gonna be so wrapped up in talking to me, you're not gonna see the bollard. And then. And for me, I, I, I know them, you know, so well. And half the time I, I play with them with my hands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, 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 leave a, you leave a bottle of beer on the top yeah, for somebody. Yeah, leave a bottle of beer on top. Yeah. Beer, beer sharing program. Yeah. <laughs> uh, amazing. Yeah, this would also be interesting to, uh, I think he's gonna go. Oh, we have a stop sign, that's fine. Okay, yeah, so there we have a stop sign. Okay, that makes sense. And here we have yield striping, so. So we'll turn left and head down this way a little bit. Yeah, that's a, that's a little awkward there with the stop signs. I'd probably opt for a uh, raised crossing there to yeah. make it clear who has priority. But again, I'm nitpicking. Well, like you said, you know, again, a lot of this stuff now has been in for almost a decade. Yeah. And so, yeah, when you start nitpicking, you start going, oh yeah, gosh, if we ever do this, you know, if we did this again or da da da, yeah. you're like, oh yeah, we this would be like continuous uh, elevation yeah. level. This would be the level of the sidewalk. Yeah. You know, we wouldn't just go with concrete here. We would have, you know, some uh, rain gardens planted here. <laughs> yeah. So. And I also, I, I think if people really want a boulevard, right, which used yeah. to be basically driving in a park. Yeah. Because that was the idea, because back then yeah. cars didn't really exist. We'll, we'll say pull you would, over here and stop for a yeah. second. Okay. This is the old tower. Yeah. So that's the tower that uh, Preston yes. was referring to. And uh, we've got apartments. Oh, the old airport tower. Yes, the old airport that tower. Is, you know, I like that. I like that yeah. they've kept the yeah. architecture. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They saw, I know some Dutch developments that are like that where they took part of an old shipping port yeah. and they keep the cranes there because yeah. it's like the, it's a little unique piece of architecture there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. So, uh, and then behind it, you see new apartments going in. Yeah. Uh, the building that you see over there is um, a, an assisted living uh, older adults uh, community that uh -huh. exists. So it, there is one on property. 
Uh, and then this is the blank, uh, the half acre lot that is currently owned by the city and available. And so this is the, the property that uh, uh, Preston and Ani would like to see a community center uh, built on. Yeah, yeah. Um, I also want to, just want to take this maybe chance that we're here as an opportunity, yeah. not necessarily to criticize the development, but maybe as a learning point about the discussed boulevards, because mm -hmm. I see the concept of boulevards mm -hmm. be discussed a lot in these new urbanist communities. And you gotta look at it right now. So, you know, a boulevard used to be just driving in a park where you would have this giant uh, right of way that would double as a social space, but also be a place for horse carriages and buggies mm -hmm. to come through. And now, we, I mean, the concept has kind of changed because, you know, we have this greenery here, but I think maybe we might both agree it's, it's functioning a little bit like a dead space because while you have the greenery, nobody is necessarily using right. it or yeah. playing it. And, you know, it, it's a landscape space, so it's taking lots of resources to maintain this. And we don't necessarily have native plants or this isn't even functioning as a uh, stormwater treatment zone. Yeah. So something I like to talk to people about in new urbanism is, that, you know, if you really want a proper boulevard, you know, actually make it where it's like driving in a park where you don't have asphalt surfaces, you have natural surfaces you could drive over. Yeah. And it's a very low traffic zone that people can play in the middle or you can have it sunken so it can operate as a stormwater zone to have it be this asset to the community where it's this giant social playground instead right. of just something you have to landscape. So yeah. future opportunity when they ever decide to build this out and they want to, because they, they have the space yeah. for a proper boulevard here. Yeah. And do you know what the vision is for this space? I do not. So the vision uh, for this space is uh, a train on grass. Ooh, right yeah. there. In that case. There yeah. you go, streetcar line. Transit, but so yeah. there's your transit. <laughs> so that generation line, 1.0. So that's generation 1.0. So that's yeah. the reason why those trees are planted. That's the reason why this exists with this uh, landscaping and this, this grassy area uh, is they prepared it with that option for the future. Yeah, I'm, so. really, I'm really interested to know uh, how they would how they would actually put that in. Like if that, if oh, that I don't think they I don't think that they actually thought that far, but yeah. they at least thought far enough to reserve yeah. the space and plant the trees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but absolutely. if you look at some of the early drawings, I almost guarantee that that's yeah. what you'll see. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right, let's keep going. From my perspective, you could do this now. Is put a freaking jogging path down, a natural yeah. surface jogging path right down the middle of it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so, because then it would be another nice activity asset. And again, runners don't like running on paved surfaces. So yeah, put some playgrounds yeah. in there, workout equipment. Yeah, uh, yeah. Make everything at grade, and then put the sandy paths in for yeah. driving. Yeah. Like, that would then be a real like I, I love. I would. I really, I'm really trying to push that idea for the Amarillo development. So you guys, if you yeah. want to do a boulevard, make it a proper boulevard. Yeah. Now you're starting to get into some of the older houses. And so they, they've been here. Uh, they were part of, uh, you know, generation 1.0. And we start to see the trees are matured a little bit more. We have a little bit more tree canopy compared to the yeah. brand new stuff that we just rolled through. Yeah, and the variation helps make it feel less cookie cutter. Yeah. Because when you see the new trees, you think, yeah. This, yeah, here, here, this feels to me like one of those suburbs that were developed along the tram lines feel, where yeah. the housing is a bit varied and it's, the street widths are narrower. Yep. Yeah. And you are talking about playgrounds and parks, so we've got a pool over there, a little park, and a playground. Fantastic. Yeah. So pretty much everybody was, is, I believe, within a three-minute walk of so playground? a playground, an open space, a trail. Is that like so, the, the, the 330, 300 concept? I like don't know, yeah. The, it's like, I think it's like I think that's what they are. I mean, it could be as much as five minutes, but the sort of a goal, a national goal, is everybody's within a 10 minute walk of a park. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, the three is like three, three trees in the uh, view from where you live, 30 square meters of greenery on your street and then you're at least uh, you're, you're no less than a 300 meter walk away from a park so oh, neat. somewhere yeah but in harlem that's and some very of it's difficult. some of it's like this this almost feels like a little pocket park right there yeah a little odd shaped thing that's quite nice yeah uh, but i would take i would take a small pocket park right next to my house any day over like a really yeah. large one that i have to walk let's uh let's turn right here Ah, stop signs. <laughs> Ooh. Generation 3.0, no stop signs. No stop signs. Well, and that's kind of getting what we were talking about earlier. If you can actually be successful at getting the design speed so that drivers are actually driving closer to 20 miles per hour or, 
or 30 kilometers per hour, yeah. then you can get away with doing that. You know, you can, you can, you know, I, I don't think the design is all that bad here. No. It's still a little wide, um, yeah. but you notice there's no center line. And so it does feel quite calm. Yeah. And you know, you look to your right and you look to your left and it's like, yeah, I mean, this is super yeah. comfortable. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that I, I, I can't remember ever having to stop at any of these intersections where there's stop signs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, something I've also been encouraging the new urbanist developers, the ones I work with, is in the street plan, instead of going through the whole like street, road, boulevard, label as 20 mile per hour street, 30 mile per hour road, because then if you label it as a goal, every yeah. aspect of your design will reflect that desire for it to be 20 miles per hour. Yeah. Ah, cool. So now we can More actually see the section they're still working on. Okay. So. We were down that way, kind of looking down this way, and you can see the transformation that's under underway. And what are they doing here? So th they're getting ready to transform it. Oh, they're putting a bike path here. Yeah, so they're, they're getting ready to transform all this space. So this used to be just the flex post, uh, that flex post treatment, um, you know, the, the two-way cycle track flex, flex post treatment here. And now they're they're basically going through and, and duplicating the process yeah. that they have here. Um, it's too bad they didn't have quite enough space to be able to add the trees that they do on the other side of uh, Berkman. Yeah. But yeah. Can't be perfect. Right, exactly. Let's roll past the construction. So you can see what it was like before, right here. All right, and this brings us to the conclusion of part four of my ride with Stefan Bear in Austin, Texas. We're gonna be stuck here at Airport Boulevard for a little while. We'll eventually make it across this disastrous road, uh, but we are gonna make our way through the neighborhood, heading over to the Martin Luther King Jr. Transit Station and the TOD there, the Transit Oriented Development. Definitely want you to take a look at that as well. Uh, so, hey, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, and share it with a friend. And if you haven't done so already, be honored to have you subscribe to the channel. Just click on that subscription button down below and ring the notification bell and we'll be right back with part five again thank you all so much for tuning in it really means a lot to me and until next time this is john signing off by wishing you much activity health and happiness cheers and again sending a huge thank you out to all my active towns ambassadors supporting the channel on patreon buy me a coffee youtube super thanks as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the active town store every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated thank you all so much